Yeah, I had a pair of shoes. I worked in the job before this. Yeah, pair of shoes. Have and I had to really long How many do we need for a forum? <laughs> and I just bought them, and I like, and I knew that they were bugging like the time. Um, I, I was by. trying to add it up in my head. So Ryan's so online. Ryan on two days of where. No, it's um, I think because we, we whittled it down. The size are you good? Um, I think that I think you probably need five or six. It's, it's still a pretty big committee of four. Does it, hey, does it, it'll say how many committee members are in that black folder of yours? Scott? Yeah, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. Yeah, so we need, we need six for voting. And, and Ryan's online. So we're four. Hello, how are you? I'm here. <laughs> well, thank you for coming. Is Brent still on the committee? Mm -hmm. Who what? Yeah. He's been because he's he was at the last meeting. He's not here anymore. I mean he's not here tonight. But yeah. It's not coming tonight, so Okay. Yeah, Brian <laughs> yeah, it kind of was quite a few in the last few months, it seems. But I think we're close to getting finished. We're just going to have to have the discussions and like really make sure we have a quorum when we're ready to vote this, which I think should be next time. No. Okay. Before we start, I want to say I appreciate the direction, advice that we're getting now. <clears throat> Thank you. The, the research is being done by professionals instead of us having to do it. And these mm -hmm. recommendations. We struggled for a while to figure out what we were doing. I mean, I think we did really well based on the information we had, but we were all like. <clears throat> This isn't easy stuff just generally. I mean, this is this is oh, these are hard yeah. hard policy decisions to make. And, um, so kudos to being a citizen committee that is really dedicated to your city and has worked on it and happy to help where I can. Um, Well, do we should we just hang out for a little bit longer? Or? Uh, we are technically broadcasting. Recording? All right. Well, we can't really vote on anything without a quorum. So, um, do we want to? Do we have anybody who would like to do a thought, the pledge of allegiance, or a prayer, or? Any of the above. I'll do the pledge of allegiance. All right, I'm going to that. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, guys. Um, so we're going to have to skip over the consent agenda for the one. We move on to number two public comments. Is, uh, do we have anybody besides Ryan on? No. Hi, Ryan. All right, then let's just get to the meat of this meeting the future land use map. <clears throat> Okay, so what I'm going to do, everybody has a copy of this map, mm -hmm. and uh, for those on Zoom, if you have access to the agenda, what we're going to do is we're just going to go through this number by number, <clears throat> and 
talk through the, the recommendations as, as staff has reviewed this as I've taken information from the general plan advisory committee from our joint session with planning commission last week or last uh, month and some comments from the public. We have um, discussion items and one public comment that came in <laughs> One public comment that came in uh, this week that I was expecting a written comment on but didn't receive was from, from property owner Nate Karras, who's interested in, in property north of downtown. And you can describe where that's at. Uh, basically is, is looking at maybe an extension of that um, downtown mixed use zone. But from after that meeting, sending you the information, there really haven't been any other changes. Uh, a few other notes just before we go into this is that this is staff just putting information out there. So none of none of this is you know set in stone. None of this is the way it has to be. It's really providing options to, to you all that help you drive your decision making. So I would expect there may be some things that staff is recommending that might be beyond or too far. We may have missed items, we need to include them. Um, but just know that this is safe space, a, a place of you know providing ideas, and you feel free to comment back on anything that uh, that we have in here. So, with that, and looking at the map, um, this is it's largely the 2015 general plan, but what it has is a few right sizing tweaks and some changes in land uses that staff thinks are appropriate based on underlying existing conditions. Um, or realities that we're seeing through zoning requests and other developer requests. So the first one is in the North Ogden downtown area, staff is recommending that the properties be added that would abut North Ogden city shops down to the old city shops essentially. So that's built in behind Lee's marketplace, uh, north, northwest along North Roman View Drive, um, up to Public Works. And, and then also that we pick up the 5,000 square foot lots, which are just south of south and east of City Hall here. Um, the reason for that is that if those, if that zoning designation is included in, in this overall area, then it gives context for other properties that might be included or properties that might be developed. So instead of ignoring that we have R15 5,000 square foot lots right next to our downtown and embracing it and saying that that seems like it would be an appropriate use in the future for other developers to use. Um, I actually missed, and I'm gonna to add to my staff report, the R15, but um, zoning within, within the area of the residential cities, or sorry, within the area of this downtown mixed use, this kind of purple color, Staff would see that you have R1 residential R15, 5,000 square foot single family lots, residential R2, which are twin homes or uh, attached units, R3, and then R4, R4 being our, our highest density uh, zone at this time. So the previous map had a breakdown of what I would have called land uses inside this downtown mixed use, but not necessarily zones. So, and those land uses didn't didn't one for one compare to an existing zone, which made it difficult for for staff as well as the policymakers to look at what zones would be appropriate in what areas. So, this is a little bit more. Um, it's less open ended. It's more based on the policies that we have today. Uh, and while we're talking about those two number ones, we might as well talk about number three as well, which is the area west of Patriot Point from approximately 2550 north down to Montgomery Farm subdivision. Um, being an area that could develop with the MPC zone, our master plan communities, just based on the acreage size of some of those parcels in there, but more likely R4. And then we've, we've contemplated a handful of additional commercial locations, uh, 2550 being one of those that along that route somewhere might be possible to include some small scale commercial. But I'd like to stop there and see if there are any I comments think or... I was gonna say, um, 2550 is already going to have commercial 
because Patriot Point being an MTC requires it. And I believe in the um, plans that I saw, it was slated for 2515. So that already opens up that for yeah, it was commercial. Like, yeah, it was supposed to be like a small area of it. All right. But That's probably about where that right is. I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Which would be my commercial identifier. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think it's just to the east of the red box, actually. Okay. So yes. I just wanted to make note of that, yeah. that I know that's already yeah, you right. going to sure. yeah. happen along there based on that. Okay. So now, yeah. what about so in this discussion of expansions of the downtown mixed use area? Um, it might be easier to highlight on on here with the laser pointer. So the property owner that made the public comment is located right here. Um, this is Washington Boulevard as it comes up the hill at Alberta Drive. It, it angles to the right, and there's a series of duplexes along that road as well as duplexes that were approved next to Ben Lomond Cemetery. So there's a pretty good triangle here of some multifamily that yeah. fairly disconnected, um, at least map wise, from the RCC zones. But the residential city center zone runs up to this block here, 2750, and up around. Um, it may include these parcels, but everything in between is residential R1H and residential R1H at AG. That's yeah. 8,000 square foot lot, but permit some animal keeping um, mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. So the policy question is whether or not this downtown mixed use zone should run up along 450 East and pick up this triangle here, which would permit under this recommendation up to R4. Um, there may also be like, you know, this could potentially be one of those buffering, stepping down of density locations where maybe it's an overlay that permits duplexes in that whole block, you know, block and a half, two block area, based on the fact that you already have a number of them already in there. Um, and but right now there's no open space in there, right? No. It's all no, it's all single, it's all yeah. existing large lot single family homes. Um, some of these lots, this one being an acre, you could actually yeah. divide it into about, with the positioning of the existing home, you could divide it into three lots. Isn't that though, yeah, that's Jose's home, right? Paris. No, the one right on the corner, the triangle right by the road is Jose's. That one? No, mm -hmm. the other end, the west side. Yes. The west yes. lot is Jose's. Right on uh, Washington. Oh, over here. here. Yeah. Okay. So we we have this we, we kind of have this uh, development fabric that's like one block off of Washington the whole length of Washington is sort of higher intensity uses. Um, I think there's probably some justification for doing this, but it certainly is an expansion over what the previous general plan had uh, had contemplated. Hello. <clears throat> I think one thing to consider about that area is what the present status is and the people that live there. They want higher density like in the backyard or not. Has he given a proposal? Like what is he like what is he thinking? What is the what is it looking like to him? He's curious. He has he has a few proposals. He has one proposal where it subdivides under current rule regulations into uh, three lots, and then it's one acre. And so if, if he could do an R4 and develop that, then the value may be there to knock down the existing single family home and do a multi-family home, which would be on an acre with the hill and you know, you're like 10 units, to up to potentially 10 units. Exactly. Exactly. Sorry. Right next to the cemetery. Yeah. Just west of the cemetery. Oh. Uh, it's this piece here. Oh, okay. So his the backyard of the piece would be the townhomes that exist now, or the gotcha. Or the, the, oh, the okay. Places. It's where it used to be the road that they closed up when they put the towns on that area. 
Now, one, you know, one, one property owner's desire to do multifamily on their lot is certainly important, and they can ask that question. But I think that um, I really think John, you asked the right question, which is in this area, is this the right thing? And and you do have a handful of duplexes up there. So maybe it's maybe duplexes are the the highest that, that you expect or accept as the transition between the higher density multifamily as you get closer to 2600 and south before you get up the hill. Um, but there's, you know, that, that was approved back in 2000 or 2001, that subdivision was. So I don't know what the underlying zoning was 20 years ago that permitted that, um, that project to go in next to the cemetery. I mean, I, I like duplexes as we get closer to the single family homes as an option for housing options and a little bit of a higher density. Feels like a good buffer between the two as we get into more. Um, Cause looking at that from here, you know, I can see that they've got some. Duplexes are all along that. Washington, Washington Boulevard yes. in the curve, right? Yes. It's this house and this piece here. This is the cemetery right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one alley on that corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the only one that's by acres that would have. Yeah, so he's looking. Yeah. So with this back here, I guess my concern is, is if the single family home came down that, you know, I mean, back here, it's not really abutting anything that he's on single family home. So I don't. you want to bring that down to do the higher density for potentially the whole the whole area. yeah if the value if you know if the value isn't there what you would probably end up with would be four additional units you'd get two lots and then a do a two family dwelling on each so of he's lots. not talking about knocking down the existing We're not with there. not with duplexes i don't know that the i don't know that the money just, would be there to return but if yeah. it were a townhome project then sure you know that that would be something to look out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so he's kind of like in that weird middle space of. Mm. I feel like if it's not like smack dab in the middle of the neighborhood, as yeah. a family neighborhood, where it's right there by the cemetery, yeah. there's a lot of multi-family units up that way. It's just this homework. Yeah, that's it's like kind of right there. Yeah. yeah, there's still a couple single family around them, but it's mostly yeah. And you want to take it to what zone? Sorry. Well, I would I would probably put it into this downtown mixed use. Um, another way to do it would be you you call it like the uh, downtown overlay, but you limit the. The um, zones within it to R2 or RCC. We're going to be running a um, an amendment to the RCC zone to permit two family dwellings again. That was previously in there and been pulled out. Yeah, yeah. So okay. you could you could permit the RCC zone and then somebody could rezone to RCC and get two houses. Yeah. I I like that. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. You know, but in re reality. I don't know what the status of the Crusade property is, but there's really only two homes in that area. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, Crusade's lost. Yeah, they lost a lot of their ho their property anyway with the expansion. Yeah, I mean, so, so and I don't, they're 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 there. There. I don't believe they're there. I don't believe they They sold it to the city. They did. Yeah. And moved. Yeah. That's what I thought that they the done. The last time I talked to him, he was still waiting. So I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's something. I don't have a problem with that. So, what color would it become on the map? It will. It be this this purple okay. mauve, like downtown color. But right. I don't want. I don't want all of those. Well, it's not my recommendation to say R four should stretch up that far. So this block between the purple and that triangle would stay yellow. I don't think it would. I think I would include it. I think you would say duplexes would be permitted along that whole stretch of Washington, one one step back. Um, one to not create an island, which isn't a huge deal. We we can create islands, but the other is just um, 
I think the fabric of the neighborhood actually probably supports it, honestly. Yeah, yeah. around um, Washington? Yeah, mm -hmm. well, not necessarily on Washington itself, but That's one one half block back, yeah. you have two, you've got duplexes right. um, on so 2750 yeah, and 2800. Yeah, they are. Um, I I would go for no islands just for continuous flow. Yeah. So I would call it. Um, I would branch make notes from. We call it some sort of overlay. It'd be like a downtown downtown overlay or two family over. We would mark it in something else. So what would um? I know that that runs down, and we've already got that. Just since we're discussing that proposal for that area right here and these neighbors that are, yeah, what the, does the, that push up to? Mm -hmm. So that, this here, what I've written in the staff report that the downtown mixed use area could have R4 would be supportive of, of Shauna Flinders' reason. As our and board. her, their proposal that they've already presented. Well, it, they proposed six units, but physically they can't fit. It would yeah. have to be five. Mm -hmm. um, speaking to that property owner, they're still undecided what they're going to do, whether they're going Same to one. just subdivide in place under the current rules and build homes and sell them, or mm -hmm. attempt to wait out the um, tabling of their reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and again, my concern is they had enough residents around them that were speaking up. So it's like, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, we had, yeah. We had, Brandon and I had a conversation today about the, uh, you know, you have the residents that are there today who will be impacted, but the folks who would be good neighbors who may purchase those, like it's almost you don't have a chance to have the other conversation. The who are these neighbors going to be? Um, so it's yeah. a hard it's a hard call, and maybe R four in in sections of this, you know, R in isn't correct. Maybe that's too much, and you. I mean, and I can see it somewhere. I guess it just it feels like are you know, so it's tough because yeah, I can see that there, but not quite yet because of the impact, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, I'd hate to do something like that and force all of these folks to sell because yeah. they, they feel don't like they it. don't like it. And so we're forcing something that we could see down the, in the future by allowing something, you know, that causes, well, that's such a weird, I don't know. Yeah, but on the other hand, we are not the planning commission. We are looking at 30 years from now. That's our job, right? Yeah, but I mean, the discussion we're having right now is on a piece of land that already has a proposal. So I'm just yeah. talking about what that looks like because if we put it, it could be 30, 30 years down, but once we approve it, it could be now. Right. And so that's kind of what's happening right there is that piece of section. You know, they brought that. And so How, if we approve we, it, that will open it up to that. So my question, have they had any of the neighbors around them come in and complain about mm -hmm. Yeah, in the, re mm -hmm. in the rezone request, they were quite vocal. Okay. There was quite a few. And so that's why I say, you know, yeah. they're they're active enough to, to come and show up and say so. Well, if it wasn't on the table right now, if they hadn't been even discussing it whatsoever, would we, as we are looking at our 30 year plan, would we be discussing broadening this downtown area anyway? Yeah, and that's what I'm saying is I think that's great and I think it fits. It concerns me a little bit and I just want to have the discussion about, okay, yeah. so we're seeing it, but we know there's a proposal and I know that it makes sense and could eventually become that, but by because, you know, by saying, yeah, we think this works right now and then this happening here, you know, I don't like the idea of causing harm to neighbors that are speaking up and pushing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm not yeah. saying that that's what'll happen. I'm just looking for discussions because it's a you know a thought I have. I know that they have all vocalized and this this is, this but, yeah, but it's gonna I mean it may be a 30 year proposal, but whatever we suggest here is gonna be could happen. happen yeah, tomorrow. that's what I'm saying. It's that's we know that. that's on the table. So yeah, this is an emphasis like here. Where is that? Um the area this piece is let's see. Just to give you an idea of each other. 
Hold on, where's the school in the park? It's oh, it's already in it. We, he's no, got it. Yeah, he added it in there. But it is that zone, <clears throat> and they took out duplexes, which is the community members that came and spoke said that they they helped design this zone because of those condos that were put behind them. They still yeah. have that. Yeah, okay. So and what's interesting about this piece of pro property is it's almost it's the perfect shape. It's 100 feet deep in one direction and just over 200 feet long. So oh. <laughs> if you did, if you applied an R15 to it, you could get four, um, four 50, you know, 52 foot wide lots there, and that's similar to the duplexes in the RCC. You would divide it into two quarter acre that then have their own like condominium flat they're just drawn a little bit differently so it's it's multiple ways to kind of get to the same end result it's that fifth unit that's the townhome unit that's yes. really the kicker that, that, mm -hmm. that was not so i saw you pointing to it and i was thinking it was a different one here, okay. so right here is where the cemetery is. Yeah, sorry. So we're talking, we're talking about two different pieces. So the one is the Nate Harris piece, who he's interested here. That's one acre. Okay. And then the Shauna Flinders rezone is right. And I think that we all agree that the that the Nate the Flinders. Let's see. Where am I? It's right here. Right. Yeah, okay. So it's that one right here. This is the one the neighbors have come up. Yes, all of these neighbors. So these apparently were put in and didn't follow the correct. None of them even knew about it. So they had these put in right in their backyard. And so they got that. Yeah. You know, and so they were. Pretty crappy dude. Um, that's that. Yeah. So it's right up Washington. You can't see these at all. If you drive by, you don't even. So they were snuck in there. I think they're like 20. 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 per. Okay, 5 and 5. And here's the school. So yeah. definitely higher density. But yeah, it's how does mm -hmm. that. So the neighborhood in the public hearings has been saying they want to keep it single family. Yeah, they uh, they were I'm trying to think what they're if they had opposition to duplexes, yeah. but that it's, it's not it's currently it's permitted in RCC. So they but they were they, they were against the rezone to R four to town homes. And, and so really that's where I'm saying is like the design the town homes it's really different. hard to say, okay, yeah. yeah. This is like just to come in here. Yeah, and it's right across across from the city. I can definitely see it being a higher density yeah, and a multi but so but it's like how, where is that balance, right? Well, that I mean, that's what we in the development business you call that a buffer property because your yeah, buffer here, it's transition, mm -hmm. and so I just wish we could have some kind of uh, buffer where maybe there's a reward for higher density because you're already kind of that road anywhere near Washington Boulevard would be really difficult for anybody who want to have a single family home there, and you look at some of the single family homes along there, they're they struggle, um, but if they had, if they got density with better design standards, the community might go. And yeah, and, and that's where I'm saying, hearing the homeowners, they're still actively, you know, yeah. wanting this feel, and and so it's hard to, because yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah I can see that area yeah. becoming higher density. It totally makes sense, but again. I know if we, you know, this isn't, this is something that's on the table right now. So I think so. That's a tough one. <laughs> well, see, duplexes are not allowed in that zoning oh, at the right. moment. That's right. But there was support there. Well, we, we, staff was directed uh, by the council to reconsider that and bring that to planning commission okay, for consideration to put back. Yeah. I mean, some kind of higher density again. And that's, what about the large parcel across the street from Washington behind the church? Is that the one behind the church on 400? Mm -hmm. Is that, that one next to the park, across from the park? Mm -hmm. Or um, cemetery? Well, that one is the Meyer, north of Alberta. Richard and Gloria Myers Trust property. 
Yeah. Do you Just, have a map that's telling you? Hold, okay. I got the Weaver County. Okay, because yes, I'm like, I really was. I was thinking, boy, you learned all these uh, people. That's, no, we're we're not. Uh, <laughs> place to go. As yeah. far as we're looking at this map here, yeah. we wouldn't be considering higher density on the west side of Washington as it goes up the hill. Okay. Why are we considering it on the east? Well, there's precedence. There's some that's already, that's already, already there from the new yeah. yeah. that, that were developed 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, yeah, I think that's the highest it would go, right? That's the point we're yeah. discussing and yeah. moving it up. Because if you look at the map he's got there, the purple yeah. stops. So, this map. So, we're looking at Sorry. moving this up all along here to there. And then stopping it just along this or that triangle, mm -hmm. or yeah. Just that one, two block section, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. I don't, I, <clears throat> at this point, I, you know, I mean, with the I mean, everything along Washington is single family, but you know, <clears throat> how long they've I think most of them are pretty long time residents, uh, some uh, of them are, some of them are. They, Want to leave? I mean, they can still keep single yeah. or maybe look at. Yeah. Well, as far as our around them was conducive. To our job people. goes, I think. Yeah, I, I think, think we all agree that moving it up yeah. is up, and then that other I discussion. At just, least four duplexes. Yeah, I would say yeah, at least yeah. duplexes. Or at most there. duplexes. At the most. At most. Yeah, at most. I think so. Yeah, I, you had a comment that you were. Well, I just wanted to clarify that the more north property over by the cemetery, we were all in agreement that mm -hmm. sure, let's go ahead and make that higher density. But the one that's right in the middle of the city center is the one that we're I not think sure about. about this, right? mm -hmm. yeah. below it. Just this section. Well, right? yeah, that the council has tabled a reason for yeah. our board. These that's are all kind of tabled and it's just going yeah. So, but yeah, I think we're including the the. Triangle plus below the triangle, right? Yeah. And see, I think the triangle the could triangle right below. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. extend that purple all the way. Right right. <clears throat> and to me, if we keep it so that it's just like duplexes, I won't go. I won't like. I don't know if I'm going to town or anything. Like that. <clears throat> duplexes. I think that, yeah, because if you start town home, you look at the second story thing. Exactly. And, that's and, not and I get that, but my other. concern is they're already at the top. I guess maybe that's the cherry on the top of the duplexes. I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're there. I mean, they're, they're already there. Yeah. It almost seems like this corner could almost support that. Yeah. Because uh, it's got the church, the cemetery, and the others. So if it went from townhomes to duplexes, that's a great yeah. buffer to higher density that's not really, you know, abutting anything. I think though if we keep the town hall to right here and then just go with the Well duplexes. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. This whole this triangle yeah. can almost in my mind support townhomes and then bring because it it's got you know and then this becomes the buffer that's abutting the single family homes as you get into the different yeah that's is there a light for that intersection? Looking at it, but uh, John for yeah. Alberta and 400. Yes, it'll be installed in the next month. Oh, or so. So when we are talking about duplexes and townhomes, that doesn't necessarily have to be the purple downtown mixed use, right? No, you're right. We have we need to identify it somehow on this map that is it's like a, a land use category that's supported by underlying zones. And um, it's not the zoning map itself. So the zoning map ends up slightly more messy. You'll end up with some RCC and some R18, and then maybe maybe they come and they get a rezone for R2 or 3 or something. And that that all happens because the overlying bigger bubble sitting on it from the general plan says these types of land uses are available for. Mm -hmm. So we just need to figure out, and you can have a gap. You can have that, you know, the, the two block stretch there between. 2850 and 2750 uh, via gap with more of that downtown mixed use on that triangle. It's certainly possible, but it's just that doesn't create the sense of the like the buffer or the stepping yeah. up of zones. Um, what's, what's but, the orange color residential? Yeah, 
Yes, yeah, so the, we and we can talk about that when we pull my. Well, I don't mean to change no, numbers. I'm just saying, like, what some terms that we're talking about here. What if we made them orange instead of purple? Would that be the same thing? Give us townhouses instead of because mixed use is saying we could have commercial way up there by Alberta. Um, I think it's anything above six units per acre, but I don't know what. That so is. that would be like R15 and above. So uh, it, it's not likely, it's likely not duplexes. It's going to be some, some 5,000 square foot lots and then 8,000 R110, that sort of thing. So it would make a residential medium density? Yeah, yeah, yep, that's, uh, and the, that number two specifically is, it's a reduction in size of the downtown mixed use based on the fact that those are fully developed, deep agricultural long-standing lots. I mean, it, it's going to take, a serious act of of force really to get that to change um, any time in our yeah. future. So um so then the best um this uh triangle and bubble uh or island I mean triangle and island that we're talking about it couldn't be turned orange because we want it to be uh, duplexes instead of townhouses. That well, that's saying? what the request, that's what the property owner's request was, is something higher density based on the, the fact that there's already a lot of duplexes there. Right. But, you know, you, you can make a, certainly make a policy recommendation. I think you're more likely to see uh, duplexes than like an R15 be really possible there, except for on that one acre parcel, because somebody could take a low investment single family home down and reconstruct on that same lot of a new duplex. But you're you're gonna have a hard time combining those properties to resubdivide them into new 5,000 square foot lots. But that doesn't mean it's not it's not impossible. In fact, maybe maybe including duplexes and the R15 in that area would be um, worthwhile and give folks options. I'm just curious, I'm just asking about the college because if we make it mixed use, then are we saying that you can have commercial all the way up to that triangle, um, which is across from this um, conservation area? Would we have? Yeah, that's true too. Well, we it's, want it to be mixed use. Yeah, it's an overlay. I didn't expect commercial to continue past 2750, but I think that's a good point to be explicit about that unless the committee feels differently. And those homes east of what we're talking about are well established, old homes, families. Yeah. Yeah, I can't I... well that intersection though, that's a that's a busy intersection. It's gonna have a light mm -hmm. so leaving it. And we're allowing it into mixed use so it gives some type of possible neighborhood commercial use mm -hmm. that is a softer commercial that the neighborhood would want not the 7-eleven but coffee shop straw market yeah yeah so um i think that um the last thing anyone wants to do is Live on that intersection. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, I mind as well make the list of it. I don't. I don't know that I mind the use all the way up there on that because, I mean, that's you know that just gives. I also think you know like a little coffee shop versus townhomes, on Washington. A little coffee shop is you know that's not getting outside of what feels like commercial area, and it's not. And I you know anything higher than those condos. Definitely is in, in established neighborhoods. That's when you're hitting the lake view. Is that what that is? I think but the neighborhood would take a strong market over time. That's, that's yeah, and that's going to organically come on its own. That's not going to be. A, yeah, leaving it in there is that downtown mixed use at least opens the possibility that somebody may come for a rezone yeah. on Washington for commercial. Yeah, that's yeah. not. That's um, one of those thirty year. year. I'm not rule anything out then if that's. Yeah, I think we should just extend that purplish color. I agree to do that whole area. Now that if we simply extend it, then it has the R four R three designations in it. So do you want to extend it, but no townhomes, or do you want to extend it and let the 
chips fall where they I think it's just enough to wash into the mat. Let the chips fall where yeah. they the chips fall where they well, how would you do it and exclude townhouse? You would just call yeah. it like a downtown overlay and then specify mm -hmm. that it can do R2, R15, RC like I I think the planning commission and city council could be yeah. So yeah, I think having that. an option yeah. where yeah. <laughs> okay. if giving that later giving today, I'm sure. Yeah, but giving <laughs> I think giving them an option with an overlay zone, like where it's like, yeah, we think this fits and we're ready for it to have this. Yeah. Or no, I think we need to stick with the overlay. It's the I think it fits right in there. So but do you know what I'm saying? Is it like kind of like this yeah. development? We'll let them fall. Let them decide if it's yeah. ready by listening to the residents and looking exactly. at it. But they've at least got options, whether it's the overlay or the. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like that, really that nice kind of works. Yeah, it would be perfect on that intersection. I will. I will. I will Just try to to do something that makes sense and use it. Yeah. Yeah. The car off is still on the west side of Washington mm -hmm. across the street from that. But I really like what Dan said. This is not our job to to worry about everyone's comments and complaints. That's what the city council is. Well, um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But giving them options, like when we say this, you know, the higher density or an overlay, like can we run those at the same time so that the city council and planning commission, as things are presented, they have options like yes it's ready for this we feel that the higher density so it's now and let's go forward we send this over to, yes. to them though we give them this recommendation so are you saying we don't recommend anything we just leave it open for them or what no 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 but that's what that's what scott's talking about is yeah. the overlay okay. overlay zoning kind of i would be okay just, just I would be so I would be okay just extending the downtown mixed use up in purple yeah. Yeah. and then with a comment that the discussion was and and specify in the discussion we talked about multifamily and about uh, duplexes only and about the potential for commercial if it made sense and so yeah. I, I think giving them yeah. the most open option and then letting yeah. them be the one that tears back yeah. from yeah. from that. Yeah. Like that. Let them know yeah. the discussion and all the options. This yeah. Is yeah. What suggest. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because we want to. Yeah. We want to recommend that. Yeah. Right. But yeah. we want to say. But these are our concerns. Right. So we don't want to say yes. You yeah. know. Like, yeah. I like that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I'd rather extend the purple than anything else. Yeah. Um, aside from that options because i feel like sometimes now it's either does it fit or does it not instead right. of discussions like well you know it's we either have to or we don't have to okay so we've spoken now about uh number one on what i'm going to call 1a with that additional up to the north yeah. uh two the reduction so brandon and i clarified that that orange means Lots between four and eight thousand square feet. So that's our our R15 and up to R18 zone. So our kind of medium ish single family density. Um, so let's talk about area number four. So area number four is it was pink before, um, and it actually, it actually had a little bit of red, but this has been extended to pick up the townhomes. But this you can think of as the cannery and Kurtz. Uh, and then undeveloped lands down south um, to 1900 to include the Big O. I think the Big O is the furthest south it goes because past that you're into the village at Prominence Point development that begins at the car wash and goes west. <coughs> so four represents what I would, you know, I would call a future commercial town center um, or kind of like a southern commercial gateway to the city that would focus on historic aspects of that area of the community and could have a bunch of redevelopment opportunity like uh, daylight and cold creek creating a unique gathering place having urban open space and representing a commercial entry into the city i want to call it out especially on the general plan because i'd like to do a more focused planning study on it and potentially apply um, for udot or wfrc technical funds to help the city think through that with a consultant because we have really good viable local businesses in some of those areas right now in kind of long-standing older lower some lower investment structures you know and how would how could we work with them to use rda money and developer interest and transition that area that that's going to have a lot of rooftops around it 
with Bill's comments point and townhomes um, and make it a really neat kind of different commercial center that's not that's not the commercial big box power center that um, that North Washington has. Is this uh, the creation of the Southtown map? Because I'm not seeing the Southtown map. Is there it's the pink. Yeah, so the pink on that is the Southtown. Oh, okay. Uh, so we've moved from like the downtown mixed use to the Southtown mixed okay, use. Okay, and that's all the pink. And that's all the pink. Four, and then six. The, the pink is recommended to extend south through number six. Two six. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, it includes and so down here. You're thinking the four areas more of like a special overlay. Kind of yeah, thing. it's really it's like it would be like a focused area yeah. that, that the recommendation is that the zoning is likely a future mixed use zone that yeah. we don't even have on the books today. Yeah. And looking back through Rob Scott's comments and, and work that he has done with the consultants on the rezone or on the um, Title 11, Title 12 work, there's already been some work done on on this area as far as creating a walkable zone. Um, the city art also went through a lot of work and effort to put together a form-based code that ultimately wasn't adopted, but we have some really good this kind of historical, like last five five years or so, documents to lean on to maybe bring that discussion back up. So, so yeah, it'd be a special call out its own kind of little down, town center location. Well, clearly, Mark's very targets the, the King's property, which is yes. very developable. Yeah. If you can get those guys together, right. I think they all are. Looking for something all, um, better than what they have. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, it's hard when you have good, when you have yeah when you have good yeah, viable businesses. Stuff. I think the transition is the hardest part. How do you how do you transition those local businesses into a new location without you know really increasing their rents or creating impacts to their business in the interim? Um, so working closely with them, I think, would be really helpful mm -hmm. too. So the area west of that's where those storage units are. Yes. Those <laughs> awful storage. Those awful. They're gonna get better. <laughs> Actually, I like Dan's proposal a lot. Uh, okay. We just have to. <laughs> number, number five is a transition of area to the institutional, um, civic and institutional. That's. It, that's a combination of the city's detention pond as well as a piece of property owned by uh, Weaver School District, and I don't expect that it's going to become any of anything other than those two things. So calling it civic and institutional now is helpful. And then we have that expanded area number six, and I I, I put the whole the whole area into that south town mixed use zone, which would include potentially C2, R4, and MPC with mixed uses. Um, I think there's another option here too that we've been talking about as staff of creating a zone that's more intense than R4, but is less fully open than the master plan community zone. So that might be a recommendation we make to planning commission to consider, and it, it could be, just an established, like call it 20 units per acre or something like that along Washington Boulevard, and then begin to rezone some of those R4 areas. Uh, after some discussions with developers, the R4 zone with its open space requirements and its height limitation, I, I don't know that in some cases there's enough unit potential there to purchase land along Washington Boulevard at its current values and, and have enough profit turnover for a developer to make happen. So we may not have functional zones in that way. And then I, I put a big green square on there, um, identified where it was identified in our public comments, but that's a marker that there's a desire for open space in a park on the southwest side of the city uh, of some sort. And it's gonna, you know, it will need to come from developers through development agreement and maybe increase zoning densities or the city purchasing land and then figuring out a funding mechanism to get that that land paid off. But um, I, I think that's an area that is generally under park right now and could benefit from a 
What Eric said is this on the map. The green on yeah. six. Yeah, just yeah. that, that green. Okay. Isn't that a detention basin right now? Well, the five. Half of half of that blue thing called five is the detention basin, uh -huh. just north of the spring meadow subdivision. Okay. And that's the city future pond, right? John? Or it's current. It, I mean, it fills up now. It's it's it's, it's one of our biggest regional detention basins. Yeah. Okay. The future pond is a patriot. Pond. No, it's okay. And it'll actually end up being, uh, I think it's technically owned by Weber County School, uh -huh. and they will use it for fields. Oh, okay. Eventually, similar to what Green Acres does, although that's owned by us, but okay. similar approach. All right. Uh, then moving on to the commercial areas. So, number seven and eight, these are. Little commercial nodes um, that staff has, has recommended. And my intention, I, I, I wrote this in the email back, is really a, a neighborhood commercial feel. And this conversation came out of um, the fish farm, which I think is a really interesting example of something that is beloved by the community, but would never get permitted today. There's no way. Like, yeah. can you imagine the uproar of your, you know, your neighbors, Chris, Christina, if you? If someone's like, we're going to put a fish farm behind your homes, and they think, I don't want to, you know, stinky pond and fish farm and people gathering and gutting fish and having a good time and enjoying themselves. Like, I wouldn't want any of that in my backyard. Or just like something commercial. You didn't even know what it was. Right. Just something commercial in my backyard. So when I think of the commercial area um, and number seven, which is the intersection of Allen Row and 1700 North, or the triangle number eight out on Mountain Road, uh, Fruitland, and 1700. I think of small scale neighborhood commercial or a straw market or agribusiness or something that leans on the heritage of the community. So these are areas where we don't have a neighborhood commercial zone written that would match this. We'd have to create the zone, create the, the policy parameters around what those mean. Um, and these are nodes that were on that historical 1960s era general plan. Um, and Monroe today is a series of, dis it's a line on the map, it's a series of disconnected streets. Yeah. But thinking about moving from 20,000 people to 40,000 people, Monroe is going to become a major north-south collector for our city that, that moves people in and out from Ogden to North Ogden. So number seven being something like a pediatric office or a dental office or a title company or some other, you know, some other commercial node that's a pretty quiet, reasonable, um, easy for a neighborhood to live with type of commercial node that that over time could drive um, some trips away from Washington Boulevard. That was what staff's intention there is. And I'm not married to any of those locations. They're just they were ideas from the map based on transportation, you know, transportation. Really commercial oftentimes naturally occurs where you have the right transport, right transportation need and the, the people there who you know who are going to benefit from it. So those two things often create the opportunity for like a centered type of development. Um, so you're talking about in the far future almost because like where number seven is, is it their homes there already? There are there's a few agricultural homes, but that's just east of the existing Woodfield Rainy Rainy um, Homes development. And then Rainy Homes, I, they're they're looking at I believe extending their subdivision up to the point of Monroe. But Monroe at 1700 and Monroe East is still open for consideration. That road's going in though. Monroe, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's planned and yeah, it's John's got all the way. Yeah, all the way. Mm -hmm. Almost, yeah. There's a there's a few holdout pieces, but between yeah. subdivision and the city, Monroe will ultimately connect. So seven, eight, and ten are basically vacant properties now. Not necessarily. Number eight right now, um, if you look at the aerial image, has a pretty intensive use. Um, that that yeah. triangle of Fruitland and Mountain Road, and mm -hmm. and again, it's like if if uh, oh, if you said so you know if you yeah. said I I want to gravel my lot and park a bunch of trucks on it, 
I don't think people would permit no, it. That's you know, it's there. Yeah. But that's no. and that's a long, it's a long-standing use. So it seems like an area that one, we have really, really good high traffic counts on Fruitland and Mountain right there. That if that were a little corner store, not a C store, it's not a Maverick, but a little uh corner store, I'd imagine it would be supported by the neighborhood. So I guess my question is you've got those three identified, but you don't make any effort in any of the rest of the city to identify them. I these were where I think well these were areas one I think that were probably viable and two the other areas in the city we can identify it are like north of the cove in that area up there I think it makes sense but there has also been some discussions but I don't know that that would necessarily be supported but we could bring it up well, I, I only bring that up because I don't agree with it. <laughs> I just wondered why you didn't put it everywhere. <laughs> I mean, my thoughts on it are I get like I like the idea of neighborhood, you know, um, supported businesses. I can see that, like the fish farm and stuff. Those are things that will organically come based on the property, the property owners, what's there, you know. And I almost rather than identifying specific areas, had wording that you know allowed it to be presented and be looked at and allowed if possible. I mean, I like a you know, I, I can never say, yeah, fish farm could go right here or a straw market could go right here. Those things organically come in the future as the neighborhood changes and the landowners. Um, oh, but this whole thing is just a recommendation. Well, and that's, I mean, but that's that what I'm- about it. Yeah. Well- But, you know, like if we say, well, then, no, maybe we need a small thing up in this part of the city, but that, I mean, that was my a small, question. Yeah. Why, why are we just dealing with here? I mean, I, well, I that's what I'm saying. Concept, I'm thinking, I don't no, I don't think I, I struggle with any kind of development high up on the mountain. I'm talking about identifying as an area rather than specific where, you know, we say possibly in the future, this is a possible fit, a neighborhood, and a very specific definition of what that is, and just leave it, you know. And those will, because I, ones that would actually fit and work really well are the ones that will organically come, and you'd like them to at least feel comfortable to present it for discussion, not, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but like, I think if we say this is a suggestion, you know, in, in this area, and we've identified that in this area there might be something. They might move it up and down the block or find a different spot. But I think if we indicate that this is an area where something like this could happen. Yeah, yeah and, and, and I, I get that. And that's Monroe and that's not, I mean, there's- I guess my concern with that is someone's going to see, oh, they've identified that as commercial and they're going to come and want to put commercial, commercial in there rather than just, you know, and I don't, I, like, it's not something that I would like I just think that it would be good to to come for discussion somewhere down the road. But again, it's going to organically come. It's not going to, I don't think, I think if it's identified, you're going to have someone who's like, I'm going to build, you know, right there because that's identified as commercial and they're going to bring it in and try to do commercial. And if it fails, we're going to end up with a, you know, a commercial building. That that's 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 that we could say soft commercial. Somehow. Well, that's why I think neighborhood commercial should be very specifically defined in anything we recommend. We can look at the use uses of neighborhood commercial. That's pretty common in cities. Yeah. I think we could come up with something that identifies um, uh, corners in by calling them uh, collector streets, like 1700 North would be considered a collector street. Um, where a collector street intersects with um, major north-south roads like Mountain Road and Monroe. And I think I, I think 10 is, I don't know about that. I like seven and eight. Uh, 10 is a where Ornifo Piken lives. I doubt it will <laughs> support that. <laughs> so, um, no, this um, but, is eight. But, um, no, but I mean, um, Great ideas. Um, uh, 
got they got to be delivered with softballs and and mm -hmm. uh, with uh, design standards and very yeah. limited, very limited I mean, use. My thinking too is is it's like there's areas that start getting developed and there's one home left and they're like, well, do, do we develop it to fit, you know, the higher density around us yeah. or do we take our home and turn it into a straw market, you know? Yeah. And but and that option is there to at least bring mm -hmm. and present because it's not. I know. like your idea of how you describe it though. You yeah. know? I mean, in this type of a yeah. situation, yes. you might want to consider. Yeah, that. and that's what I'm saying. That's going to yeah. organically present itself. And I would hate it to eliminate yeah. eliminate someone just at least presenting it for discussion because I don't know where that's going to present itself. Yeah. But I, I worry that if, yeah, yeah, but I worry if we identify and say mm -hmm. this is, then you're going to have people that are looking to do commercial, yeah. trying to fit it into those areas we've identified, then rather just. Well, but I, I'm guessing the reason Scott picked these areas is because they are available and they're optimal. Like, um, you know, on along 1700, there are homes all the way along that there. Yeah. It's like, that's a one spot probably that's not closed already. And number eight, that's kind of an awkward. Spot. Yeah, no, There's eight totally really fits. But put there. You can use a like an ampersand. We we did that on our uh, parks plan where it's not. This is our five acre property that we're identifying as a future park. It's more a dot on the map that's called out as saying somewhere here, somewhere in this zone. And I, yeah. I think yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I think saying, that's because there are homes right here. There is a home at seven and ten. So, so they're they are yeah. established homes but in seven when monroe comes through yeah at that point it that will be able to in that intersection i mean that intersection is going to be um really multi-family and that's and yeah so that's why i'm saying that's going to organically yeah. happen so to have that single family zone is going to be restrictive on getting any kind of use there and so to have some kind of an overlay that would yeah. give a neighborhood yeah. commercial feel with limited use and high design standards that you could sell to the community. Um, but certainly those intersections of Monroe and that number eight, <laughs> that, none of those are going to be yeah. single family. Yeah. Yeah. Or would, yeah. would be desirable single family. Yeah. I think that this area of the city wasn't previously in the conservation area where it's our, it's our border with Ogden City, Monroe's going to be a you know traverse through both. Um, I I would be interested. I wonder if the council would be interested in the using like the PUDs, PRUDs to go down to either duplexes or like five thousand square foot lots. If it came with a benefit, we're going to talk about number nine mm -hmm. here in a minute about um, open space preservation benefits. But then I think you're you're likely right on yeah. as far as what we're going to see from a request standpoint mm -hmm. which wouldn't agree with the map as it's currently drawn um, but i think that's going to be a future council's you know something for them to grapple with we can certainly propose i just wrote down the question consider multi-family in that down in that area or some yeah. sort of overlay that allows almost or like an asterisk of intensity of use is based on the convergence of transportation corridors yeah I'm like thinking almost like 17 down. Is that what you're thinking? Is this kind yeah. of area right here? Yeah. But as it gets developed, you know, we're going to see, we don't know what that's going to look like, but, you know, um, yeah, there's a potential for neighborhood yeah, markets through a lot of these areas. Monroe is second. Okay, mm -hmm. take that. So you've got Ben Loman on the other it's got the, and yeah. then you've got those four plexes on the other. Yeah. yeah. So, Nobody's going to want those fourplexes on one row. So, but be, that would be better for an office mm -hmm. or a dental office or mm -hmm. something. So, um, you, know, you know, that's a good example of intersections that you're going to see on one row Boulevard as it does. You know what the building is in all the cities out there? What, kind of, what the development is? Um, south and west is the mobile home park. And immediately south is a small lot single family development. So Monroe, as it comes, uh, Mon Monroe comes in right here. So above between the word Canfield and Drive, that's Monroe coming north. And then this tight grouping of streets there is the mobile home park, which uh, 
the mobile home parks are probably one of the least like sticky types of residential, uh, meaning that it, it could certainly turn it over. And if that mobile home park were to turn over with the relocation costs, it would go high density. So your your south end of your city is bordering yeah. existing mm -hmm. uh, high density or like transitional type of yeah. density. Um, and then, you know, you have right up to Monroe, um, Rain, you know, Rainy Homes is is interested and and or working to develop an extension of their existing subdivision, which is mostly eight thousand square foot lot. So at least on one side of it, you'll have you know me, medium density or smaller lot single family homes for our city uh, on that stretch. So can about neighborhood. Um, so I want to explain one of the reasons why saying maybe not being so specific about identifying um like i think of julie's property and they've got that little horse area if they wanted to start selling fruit or something right there it would be really cool it wouldn't be you know but that would be something that would be like a neighborhood market neighborhood commercial and if it's not specific on here it won't at least come up for discussion so that's where i'm saying organically you never know where it could come up so being very specific as to what we see neighborhood commercial looking like i think is a is is a better plan for the future and allowing ideas to at least come for discussion as to whether it fits or not but very specific in what that would look like rather than you know my concern again is if you pick out specific areas you may have developers outside of the city that are like, oh, hey, I'm going to shove a commercial in there because they've got it blocked out for that. And I think that that could be a potential disservice and that doesn't necessarily. Let me think about soft ways to. Yeah. So those are so that, that's my like concerns. Right? I see what I'm saying. Like yeah. what I'm thinking is if we work the soft or the yeah. neighborhood market the right way, then they wouldn't be able to shove anything in it. Like No, exa exactly. Exactly. But I also would hate to close off the discussion of Julie's property possibly being a fruit stand because we haven't marked it red. Like I, you know, I don't want to shut down discussions so or possibilities. The um, dentist office on Monroe, um, where that's going to be kind of a busy intersection. Is the dentist office going to count as this neighborhood market? Neighborhood commercial. Neighborhood commercial. It would. Yeah, I, I, those are seeming to be fairly popular. You see them on where I live in the west side of Davis County. You have sub collector roads out there, and uh, you've got a we care a pediatric dentist on one corner um, that's walkable to my house, and then the other side now has. A dentist and a physical therapist and um, an assisted living facility, which is a pseudo commercial use. They they try to call it residential sometimes, um, but their yeah. like nursing home facilities are are pseudo commercial. And there's one there on 1700 North that is sitting in the existing zoning as it is as a as one of those permitted uses. But it's it depends on how you classify commercial, right? So I think those are relatively good neighbors, um, and. I you know I don't know it's it's just I'm looking at I'm looking at Monroe which for a long time has been this idea and or like a disconnected right of way and when you put the right land uses together with the right transportation that's when the opportunity actually arises to do something different. Uh, I also and, yeah like one of the examples that gave me this one like in farming is it farmington or um where is it that little rock that old rock oh, building that they in turned fruit, into so in fruit heights on old mountain road where um, they turned into to like done. a boutique type yeah. thing you know it's it's Which not is, there. so if, you know yeah so i like what if somewhere yeah. down the road one of these old yeah. barns yeah. or owners yeah. wanted to say Hey, we want to keep this barn here. We'd like, we're thinking maybe about teak. We'd like to fix it up. I would hate for those discussions to not happen because we've only identified certain spaces. I would hate for the, you know, and again, me saying that doesn't mean like, oh yeah, it can go anywhere. I just, you know, I think. But this overlay, your idea, which is a good idea, this would have to be an overlay on like many of the multiple. Like, We'd uh, have to decide streets. where yeah. we, you know, I think, I mean, that's what we I, look at. John, can you pull but up I just, uh, you know, the parks plan out of the general plan maps? Yep. 
I so would love those discussions to happen. I don't know what they'll ever look like, but there's so many possibilities. I would hate for them to be. I just think you could just drop a couple of like asterisks on there, and then they're clearly identified as this neighborhood commercial, which has restricted uses and focuses on. I think yeah, because I, I agree that overlay could get really big. And it's not about making it really big, it's more about just saying, hey, in the future, council, you may get a developer that sees opportunity at, at one of these key nodes and corners mm -hmm. we should consider that at yeah. some point. Yeah. Yeah. That or just reason. yeah, yeah. Then or we don't just have to be specific right now. No. The, we see this as a possibility in the city neighborhood commercial as you know and be very specific at what com neighborhood commercial looks like maybe we don't identify anywhere just because we don't know but we could see this as a possibility and would like it to be a discussion if the idea ever came because you know I don't that's I don't know but I'm just you know I'd love it if someone decided to yeah, preserve it. So all, here if you look at what they've done is future park needed and then just sort of a, a no around yeah. it. And that is a little asterisk. Yeah, yeah. those asterisks are future park needed, their location undetermined. Um but it's it's the idea that that's what is there's yeah, something yeah, missing yeah. here. Yeah. And so I, you know, same thing that it might be, there could be potential here and you yeah. drop in those nodes and then. Saying that, you know, we, yeah. we see this as a, these are the areas we see it in, but we also realize that land is going to develop and, you know, but be very specific in what we see neighborhood commercial as that seems to be like where we have the most, because if they're going to present it, if it, Sorry, Thank guys. You're, no, you're good. I'm getting you're old and I'm at that point where my eyes are trying to decide if I can see or not see and where and when and how. So, um, I like the locations that you picked. Um, I, I think the asterisk is a great idea as well. Um, I was just thinking of another idea like if we had a straw market um, just south of Wadman on 2600. Mm -hmm. um, 1050. Yeah, on uh, 1050. That 1050 might be another option. So, so at 2600 and 1050. Okay. That's a crazy intersection. Let's get ahead. Where the river comes through. Mm -hmm. Where would you put it? I was just thinking, like, if there was a little straw market, like, next to the park. Uh, so, be the uh, mm -hmm. north east intersection. Just the north east. Just, you know, on this area. Where I mean, it's it, it, it's kitty corner to the future park. Right. So that's yeah, going to be a busy park. intersection. Right. Yeah. Once that park develops, and, um, let's not forget about the mayor's um, ski resort village in Gondola that you can't wait to have put in. <laughs> you got to make sure an asterisk put on that. Right? Where, where is I almost, I almost went to that old trailhead. Twenty six hundred and ten fifty. I almost wonder if. 1050 and 3100 would almost fit better. There's all that. There, so yeah, what, you know what's that, funny about yeah. that? 1050 and 3100, there's a little triangle. There's a yes. Little, and uh, yeah. I, I said this the very first meeting you were discussing this that had 30 years ago, had somebody put like a last chance market up there mm -hmm. on, on 3100 going into the divide road, they would have made a killer. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, it would have been the best spot yeah. for a little neighborhood so I almost, market. I think that but that could. It's, it's just so it's a family right there. Right. It, it is, yeah, yeah. It's like the opportunity might be passed, yeah. but um, third, what would really be cool something up on the divide road that has a view that would be like a. But see, this cool is what I'm saying. Front. There's actually yeah. a lot. Of, yeah. There's a lot of places, yeah. and we don't know what's coming down in the future. So I would hate to just shut off the discussion. Well, I mean, you know, the legislative process of the city council, they can spot zoning is no longer illegal. And yeah, spot well, zoning used to be illegal, yeah. and so popping something so I, I where think, it makes yeah. sense is not. I mean. It, it, if, if we can just somehow some way with asterisks or whatever you're suggesting they're all great ideas and ways to do it but to at least recommend to the pc we, we could recommend you know this is a thought we've had about some of these neighborhoods somewhere in the future and, you know, yeah yeah 
we we looked at there oh, maybe three or four areas but it's something you ought to consider for the whole city i think we should discuss what yeah. what um neighborhood market looks like to us though in the very like i think that I is like, where we're going to have the biggest I like the city. because if they're bringing it you know the where the placement is going to matter but mostly what it's what their options are to put there yeah, you have to be you careful know. with neighborhood commercial uses. Yeah. Like if it's an office building, you yeah, two stories, then the second story is looking into somebody's backyard. Yeah. So, yeah. so you just have to be really careful. Well, and like well, we can just tell them things I, that they ought to consider when they're established these zones without. Yeah, I don't think we have well, that. I, you know, I'm just not here. This is kind of weird, but on Monroe, they have that little corner store. It's kind of more in Ogden in Ogden, City. Yeah. Yeah. But that's kind of as we sit here and talk about it that's kind of what's going through people's minds is more something like that that just kind of fits into a little corner mm -hmm. you know like you said your little triangle yeah. you know um, where it just fits in there but it doesn't because like that one my husband didn't even know that that was quite a store until there was a shooting there mm -hmm. you know but he's like oh i didn't know that so we had of course then we had to drive by so i knew where it was and he's like I've done Monroe a lot, but I've never really noticed that because it just it just kind of blended yeah, in and it became a part of your neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. See, those those are the anyway. Yeah, it just becomes kind of a part of your neighborhood. These are these are the things that I think we'd have a hard time planning. We can yeah. definitely identify areas that we see I it fitting. Yeah, but it's, it's yeah. Getting, I think if we just bring it to the attention of the city council and some kind of soft development you mm -hmm. know that basically states disgusted this is what, you it, to yeah, it, yeah. And examples the way how do you see that kind of yeah yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, yeah how do they see mm -hmm. it you what know? about how about the how about defining it with um uh pocket neighborhood commercial areas that uh would intersect with mount road and monroe the future monroe and collector streets, which would be the east west. The east west streets. So I think collector street was the word I was mm -hmm. looking for. Because yeah. those yeah. are the wider roads that have more traffic and 17th. Um, and you're street. not driving through it, but it keeps the stuff out of the subdivisions. So. Um, and it just in general just puts it out for the whole city. Yep. Because um, you really are only talking two roads, you know, road yeah. and one row. Yeah. And then you're maybe looking at three or four collectors. 1050, 2600. 1050, 26. Yeah, here's well, no, so that, that one on 2000 is we, we stuck it at it, it's the intersection of Fruitland and 2000, which will, this is, it's proposed to have a road continue on to Mountain. So you're at that yeah. sub intersection of not, you're not on Mountain, you're on Fruitland, you're near the fish farm. Um, right now, number 10 feels really agricultural, but it's again, yeah. it's one, it was one of those like looking at the long term of what that um, development pattern could, could look like when that road goes through. Um, but I, if you you know if you guys don't mind i think with that those suggestions and 45 minutes into the discussion i yeah. i'd like to yeah. um, consider how we show it and then also yeah. present that um in our next meeting uh, like what yeah. what yeah. Yeah. commercial would be defined as yeah. right okay. now on fruitland there's yeah. a farmer on fruitland yep. who has corn out for mm -hmm. sale yep. and it, it right by where that pen is actually and, and those farms you know the historic farm barker farms with its great big buildings i would love to see um that type of thing kept and even if it were you know in the future somehow developed around or something but you you retain that little agribusiness farm thing you know yeah it's like you were saying about any of the the old cannery building or not cannery but um the old, the old barn, the yeah, old the barn, country boy dairy. Yeah. The country boy dairy barn would have been a perfect place for like a building gateway to the city, you know, gateway to the city with a little restaurant and then these little eclectic stores. Yeah. You know, the the people, you know, like you know, so many barn, people you know, remember the country boy dairy. Yeah, yeah. going into mm -hmm. Park City in the White Bird. Yeah. You know yeah. about that? Uh -huh. Park City. Yeah, the city. That's oh, a conservation. Oh, right. It is now a mm -hmm. city park. Oh, that's cool. And everybody like goes that. and takes their pictures now. <laughs> that's cool. The city owns it now. Yeah,
talk to the other one. That's your word. 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 That's your but I don't I know. It's, it's, it's interesting, though, that yeah. that's like a discussion I thought I would never, you know, just yeah. based on. Yeah. Uh, it, you yeah, know. I think. But, and, and again. Yeah. And maybe that can be added to the language um, yeah. where iconic um, landmark buildings mm -hmm. uh, should be considered. And, yeah. Um, and uh, like, um, in. I'm thinking of what's going on in Hyde Park right now, um, where I grew up. And Hyde Park is a half acre minimum zone town. Yeah. Um, and now there's a there's a farmer that wants to start a winery <laughs> in Hyde Park, Utah. And um, so he, and, and he's already uh, developed one of his barns into an event center. And it's actually working quite well. Now he wants to grow grapes and he wants to um, be a winemaker. Yeah, it's great. I think it's a great story. Um, but you know, something like that, um, he's got to get special. I, yeah, and, I just would hate for us to close the door to any discussion of because yeah. I don't know. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Good. So okay, let's. One. So let's transition to number nine, which is three areas, and the three areas are those locations on the map that that staff recognized as fully developed, very limited opportunities for conservation, and are essentially being pulled out of what's being called that, that agricultural protection area. Um, I also brought the parks to the forefront of those areas to just show that those parks aren't, they're not turning over, they're not redeveloping their existing you know, uses in the city there. So it's a bit of a right sizing of this location. And then um, we've done some, some thinking on what actually conservation would mean. So the city has developed you know, dozens of really, really great subdivisions over the last 10 years, um, many of them in this conservation area that didn't really come with any true conservation. There's, there wasn't a discussion of, if I'm moving from RE 20, 20,000 square foot lots to an R110 or R18, what's the city getting as the benefit? It was just a rezone and go. And Northwood Hills is an example of that. It's a great subdivision, but it didn't have any appreciable conservation. Um, on the south end of the city, the reigning home subdivisions at R18, uh, again, no real conservation. So I looked at a few different cities' conservation ordinances and then had a, a long discussion with Dave Peterson at Farmington City. And the conclusion in the staff report is actually the same thing that they have codified. And I didn't even realize that, but um, it's basically 30% land preservation gets you approximately a doubling or a little bit more of it than a doubling of your zoning. So I did, I ran the calculation and I've now spoken to three different developers about this and they all felt like this was pretty reasonable. Um, if you have RE20, 20,000 square foot lots on a 10 acre parcel, which is pretty common in this area, the urban agriculture, where we run between five and 15 acre parcels. There's a couple that are larger than that, but there's many that hover in that like 10, 12, 15 acres. Mm -hmm. So you could get 21 lots, but at 30% or at 30 land preservation, if you double the zoning and develop on seven acres, you can get 30 lots. Um, the real policy question here for the council is how to do that, what to do with the 30% land preservation. Because there's there's two directions you can go. One is physical land preserved and given over to the city as either improved park space or just land that the city can then improve in the future, um, or a fee in lieu of that. So you take three acres, the appraised value of three acres, the developer gives you that money as the city and then they get to develop R110 on the entirety of the site, which is basically what we're doing today, but without getting any money or open space. Um, and then we cobble that money together over time and purchase a larger regional park with it. Um, there, 
I just, yeah, I'm sorry to interject. High park does that make uh -huh. if you develop a subdivision of high park, if you do develop 20 lots, you have to give two to the city and they actually own them and then they sell them <laughs> and then they put the money in the park. Now, that's an interesting one. It's a little archaic, but <laughs> no, that's I'm not saying thing. we like it as a developer, but you know, maybe <laughs> well, it works. Maybe we, maybe we do like something like that because money, the money in the bank is is regressive. Like land values will march away from the value of that money, even if even if it's earning some amount of interest. Uh, versus if we were to own lots, then you could hold those lots and sell them at a future date, or you know, like you could time the market with them. Um, you gotta be I don't. Yeah, you don't want to be in the business yeah, of owning lots, uh, but so I'm not making that suggestion that this is being recorded. <laughs> I don't want my like, developer <laughs> friends to kill me. <laughs> But, but so, I mean, there's lots of ways to give yeah. open space mm -hmm. to the city. That's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. And uh, you can get creative to, uh, for the beneficiaries, which are the city. Yeah. So, for, so the example from Farmington is over the course of 10 years, they, they received, they, they did this subdivision by subdivision and sometimes received money, sometimes received enhanced trailheads or bathrooms. Um, better trail connections. In some cases, it's like the 400 acres of preserved um, nature conservancy land west of West Davis Corridor came out of this ordinance. Um, but at the end of the end of it, or where they've gotten to today, was they had about $800,000 in the bank that they used to purchase um, a large 29 acre piece of property with other money, that, like grant tax money that they had and have now developed a major regional park next to Station Park um, because they had, they had a piece of property in mind. Like that's, if the city can find or has a piece of property in mind somewhere southeast part of town or southwest part of town, that land banking or, or money banking works really well. Otherwise, um, getting, you know, if you develop 10 acres and you get a three acre park out of it, that's a pretty, you know, that's a, pretty decent trade-off for the city, even if what we receive is uh, undeveloped or like limited developed piece of ground, like maybe it's it's sawed and part of it's their, their detention basin. Um, so I'm not asking this committee to weigh the policy tool for it, but I think that right now what I am saying is staff's recommendation is 30% open space preservation for an approximately doubling of, um, of the density. And to me, the beauty of it is that I think we were going to largely do the R110 anyways. I think we would have largely approved R110 in this area of the city for most subdivisions. And now it comes potentially with the benefit of preserving land. So if we're saying, why haven't we done this before? Mm -hmm. then, um, I agree with you, uh, but uh, why are we only limiting it to those number nine? Can we do it across the whole city? Yeah, you could if you're going from if you're moving from right, like an right. RE20 Anything to an R110. Yeah. Certainly. So, right. You did say in yeah, so it's at around. least but anything you know, across the city could, could have the potential of like if you're going to develop a, this amount goes to any you know, the parks, but then the R1. Any R single family meeting. Yeah. But the so R20 to the R10. Then, and then it comes with a, yeah, that's kind of, Carmington's ordinance outlines all of their zones, the base zoning, and then the potential like lot size post giving, giving up percentages. So it really is applied everywhere. So you could maybe run, move from an existing R18 to an R15 with the same type of calculation. And, and, open space and, and if you get, so. if you get good usable open space. My next question is, if this um, general plan, the whole purpose we're doing here, takes until next spring to take effect, can that um, one idea move forward immediately? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is going to, I, I, well, maybe I'm being hopeful. I don't expect this will take to get to we'll next do this spring. In like a month or two. And, uh, <laughs> we've been saying that for a year. No, no but no, I, no. we've got, but we're, we're, we're seeing, I'm seeing, yeah. Yeah, but that's a work. Yeah, yeah. Because the city's getting. Sorry, can right. And these are just 
again, discussions and thoughts that are coming to mind, not like, so, um, because I know like behind Barker Park, yes, I'm using it as a ground call because it, it, it comes to mind because it's like, right there. yeah. So they just re redeveloped this area and I think they gave that, they went from the RE20 to the R1, to the R10. Is that the mm -hmm. Johnny Hanson? Yeah, the Johnny Hanson. And I think that's, um, isn't that what that's developed? John, do you know um, what that went to? Isn't that Johnny the Hanson's right? From Brown's property. That's Northwood Hills. That's our one. I believe it's our one. Yeah. Okay. So, um, well, so that's what they were going to get anyway. So that's my example of a subdivision yeah. that was in the conservation area. Developed it the double density and had no conservation. My and so I don't know if that's a good example. Then I guess my concern is are some taking some of these areas, uh, you know, that are in single family and making a higher density. Sometimes that means these buildings go up, and so like a, a mass of buildings that are higher density and much taller. Mm -hmm. You know, that is a little concerning to me because a lot of us, you know, we buy because of the mountains. And so to have your, you know, sometimes the surrounding area or surrounding homes won't benefit from the open land because they're instead going to get the higher density, taller buildings right on the border. Yeah. So I don't know if that's, I mean, is there a limit to this rule? Can they move down from a townhouse to a four story apartment? No, it would it would be limited. I think your your base would probably be like R15 through maybe a but single, right. Yeah, but the single family homes go from, you know, like maybe a rambler to three stories usually. And they're all and so it's just limited. they're taller, skinnier. And we're hiding in the city like two and a half stories right now, which is 30, 30 or 35 feet. 35. Yeah. yeah. So in all it's in essentially all residential zones, but to your point, as the lots get smaller and that building gets closer to the property line, it, uh, yeah. it that tallness it's appears so much taller. Family, but yeah. it's mm -hmm. taller. Yeah. They're yeah. just taller homes. And I mean, like I, I've seen some of the neighborhoods that are, you know, on smaller lots there. There's quite a few going out west and they're cute little neighborhoods. But, you know, again, putting those right in the middle of, you know, I wonder how that would work or. Because I mean, I guess technically the idea is to put the, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know how you protect that. I mean, the setbacks yeah. are, you know, mm -hmm. I think the setbacks from the property line is probably going to be key. I mean, we have we we just approved a beautiful up hillside home. Um, the homeowner built a wall right on their property line, or maybe six inches inside it, and. It's it's a, an eight foot tall cement wall, and the downhill neighbor now has a backyard that is in an eight foot wall, and that's a that's legal, and that's kind of a something that's an outcome of yeah. developing on a hill. On a hill. Well, right. and I mean, again, I know I brought this up, but like my neighbors down the road where they did develop the R ten behind them, mm -hmm. they essentially just pushed dirt. <clears throat> And then build these homes where the basement is at their main level. It may even be taller than their main level. So now these neighbors walk out to a home mm -hmm. and they didn't live on a hill. They built their fence level and the developer behind the fence pushed dirt up. Yeah. And I like, I just find that just. I got a development in my neighborhood where it's limited to one story. And the people, the row right there, said mm -hmm. I didn't realize that one the ceilings now are gone from six feet to twelve feet. So you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> one story because yeah. we yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's a one story home, but now they lost I, their view to the yeah. south. Yeah, <laughs> my opinion is whatever we can do to get more park space than green space conservation. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do it. And maybe then that conservation, agricultural conservation area focuses more on what the use of that open space might be. Like, mm -hmm. is it preserved in agriculture? Like those farm uh, communities we had talked about, like urban agriculture type farming. So I can rethink too what that overlay means because I, I could see an example or benefits of, of any of these zones having the opportunity of potentially getting a step up in density if they're providing some benefit back to the community. I think that makes sense. Are there ever requirements that you will make the park or grand space when they have developers? 
Yeah, so that's uh -huh. yeah, you so should, they're the ones that yeah, they're the ones who build it. Oh, yeah, the, the, question, yeah, the question raises do you donate the park to the city or do you keep it in a PUD and yeah. have an HOA and then yep. district use? But but certainly I think that the conservation easement should be more focused on community use of the open space. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and but, the H HOAs can do it. You can do really good things with those, and through the negotiations of the PUD, you can sometimes turn those available open spaces into like park specific tot lot or usable. But in many cases, it becomes the detention basin, and then you end up with the triangle like over by um, the IHC on 2000, where mm -hmm. they have the sign that says stay off the grass, and it's a liability thing. So you have this beautiful piece of green, you know, green open space that is or Eight yeah. months out of the year is dry and usable, yeah. but they're discouraging use on it because the HOA doesn't want to be liable. Well, yeah. and uh, yeah, seeing the HOA and how that's working at Village of Promise Point, I'm like, you, you know, well, that's, you, not, that's, that's what I'm saying. saying. I was well, like, it's well, not. Well, it's like, part of the issue with green space is that then you got to, you know, then we've to, got make, to, to make it but, available, you got to maintain it. But yeah. we're now saying we part the of the problem that the city is having right now is that we're behind in parks and park space. So is that a problem or is that well, not a problem? Should, the developer, the best thing would be for the developer to, if the city wants the land for a city park, they should be able to take it if the developer is getting a bonus density. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and that should be option one. But the city, sometimes they think, well, we, we don't want the land because we don't have the money to make it a park. Yeah. And so the oh, ballot man says, true. you know, go ahead and develop your open space and just make it a PUD. Yeah, we may need parks in the city, but that's an expense. It is, yes. it is. And so the city's got to be but the, city, well, the city is required to have a certain amount of percentage of parks per right? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's not a requirement. It's That's a suggestion. A there's supposed to be a percentage that comes down from the federal government that says we're supposed to sell. Uh, send me a link if you know one. I'm not aware of any. Yeah, and you know the flip side that I'll just like play devil's advocate on that is that homes while they do provide property taxes are just a huge financial liability for cities. I mean they're they're immediately a drain because the the roads, the sidewalks, the pipes, all of that the city then yeah. owns in perpetuity and it's good for five or ten years and then you start overlaying roads and then you start having sidewalk issues and then you're replacing water mains and you gotta um, maintain so sewers. the park while I agree parks are a liability they they're a, but they are a beneficial liability um, as opposed to a sea of single family homes which does provide for the public safety you know it's like this one kind of one for one benefit property taxes pay for the police and fire to protect our protect those <laughs> structures um, but i think that the liability of the park is is worthwhile in, in taking on and yeah but it, it's a cost it's absolutely a cost but so I what was the other option you were saying about putting money away for the city yeah, the fee, to purchase yeah, so the fee in lieu works the exact same way it's just you get appraised value for that land today and that works if you have a key piece of you need to have the plan for that mm -hmm. like that money needs to have a plan and a sunset date we're going to do this for 10 years but then you're you're dealing with a market driven approach that what if you have another 2007 and the city goes for you know, four or five years of not collecting any additional park revenues. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a risk. And yeah, it can, I could go, honestly, I, I could go either way. And probably the right solution is to just be permissive of either direction being possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but with a clear understanding of, of where those future revenue dollars would go, because they'd essentially be an impact fee, which would require a new facility. It's not like you, you couldn't collect those fees and then improve Bark the Park with them yeah. um, because it would be it would be tied to new rooftops means new park space. New park and so space. it has to generate that way. Otherwise, it would be legally challengeable. So what you mean is you can't, you couldn't tear down like a Bowery and use impact fees to rebuild the Bowery, but right. you could but expand would be the Bowery. Than impact fees, it, wouldn't it? It would, it's a, I mean, it's, it's a similar, but it's, it's an, it's an impact fee. 
It's an excise tax. So that's so what whatever they would you do want to call it, but it's a it's a it is a fee on a developer for well because technically right you could use develop. impact fees to develop Barker Park, couldn't you? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you can use impact fees because impact fees are um yes, you can use impact fees. So that's why I was wondering Sorry, no, if they were a, impact it's... fees, but I but I also think that new land should be purchased. Um one of the discussions that we had had though in that I do think is worth discussing in um islands of you know land like the, mm -hmm. that's great you know like I, I agree with Christina the more we can get the better is it better to look at it where we're they're doing a fee and we buy a big area that's nice or do we get little pockets that possibly don't stay maintained and aren't usable like how Maybe retention means that anyway that they would have had uh -huh. anyway and and that's you know developers that are doing that or the city takes it but it's just there are just too many small little pockets mm -hmm. but then there's also areas where there's tons of development that a pocket would fit we have i don't know this isn't really unique to north ogden but in some ways it is we have some subdivisions that have gone to phase like 14 yeah. like yeah. Yeah. 17 mm -hmm. 17 Paul, so okay. that, that yeah. is an example of a of a I'm subdivision so that you could have slowly collected land from them over time to uh -huh. create one really good large parcel because what you would have done is you would have picked off pieces in a circle or whatever as they develop these yeah. multi mm -hmm. uh, series and we don't I mean we have HP1, HP2, like Cove area land available for that. It's who knows what will happen between Fruitland and um, and Mountain Road, but we have a lot of local developers who's, who tend to develop um, family land like that over time. So I think we do run the risk of having a lot of little like half acre to one and a half acre parcels, but I also think there's an opportunity there that you pick up in phase one, a little piece, and phase two, a little piece, and then it's like, by completion of phase three, the improvements need to be done or you, yeah. you require the developer to focus it that way. I um, also had a, a discussion with Tiffany, our parks and rec director, and she said for, for her right now, it's just get the land. The land is the, the critical thing yeah. because even if it's an acre, if it's an acre south of 1700 where there's no other parks that are really close yeah. to that area, it's beneficial, you know? So yeah, there's, one part of the value of open space isn't just the size of it, but the location, right? If you have to, if you have to drive all the way across town to a large, you know, thirty-acre park, you still you've lost a lot of the experience of you know just being able to stroll down. Well, the, the I, I noticed like in Harris School, we've been in Auburn, you know, by Old Ryan and Auburn there, and they have a lot of little retention basins in their subdivisions, which are open, and you, you see kids playing in them. Like in the winter time, it's, it's just a little slow, but they're out there with their little sleds and stuff, and it's within walking distance of their home, yeah. you know. So you can also require that there be open, that the detention base would be consolidated with the open space, so that it it would be yeah, they like it wouldn't count towards the acreage that it gets, but you know it, it uh, makes you know it allows it to the detention basin to serve multi use. Yeah, right? right. Plus one's the detention basin. Yeah. Hey, on um, the last piece, let's just talk about the hillside. This one, I, I took a little different approach. I don't know if I should have or not, but um, we we went with HP1, HP2, HP3, uh, changed the word retail to retain. So it should say <laughs> retain the underlying zoning, but you may apply a density bonus for open space preservation. So 25% density bonus for preservation of 25% open space. Um, this area, you're going to be dealing with more like 50 acre parcels. So at, at HP3, which is a zone east of the cove, um, you can get 25 lots. But if you do a 25% preservation, you could get 37 and a half, per, um, I'm sorry, 31 lots. And the lot sizes become slightly smaller. So you run, you go from two acre lots down to 1.2 acre lots. Um, we could do the same like 30% for doubling your lot sizes are going to shrink dramatically at that point from two acre down to probably like 12 to 15,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there wasn't, you know, this, this like 25 for 25 was 
it's a discussion piece. It's something we can talk about. Um, I don't I don't know what the right thing up there is because you have the opportunity for like master plan communities to happen up there. There's enough acreage for it, and that may require much more creative clustering ordinances or policies. Um, more like permitting the PRUDs up in the HC1 HP tree. So I don't know if you want to grapple with that or think about it or anyone else's. This is all the Marriott property that's already been yes, right. There's, well, there's Marriott, there's Marriott property, which is kind of number where the number 11 is, and also north of Nebo. Yeah, but, I was like, but there's some uh, other property owners east of the cove there yeah. that are in are in Marriott. And then um, this is like this part here looks really good because it just captures the Mason Cove. But from an engineering standpoint, I've learned that this is yeah. this is an alluvial fan that came down, yeah. so which is basically like a geologic historic landslide. Yeah. And so our engineer was saying, you know, through this area, there's probably a fault line, but it could be buried a hundred feet deep. Like yeah. you, you just don't know. These are kind of interesting soil this, this is going to be this piece of property here i've been contacted a number of times on developing and it's it will be a challenging piece of property to develop from a number standpoint water and yeah. uh, services but yeah and there's you know the ideas range from full-on open clustering for being permitted so that'd be like i'm going to call it multi-family but really it would be ultra high-end super expensive townhomes or like four story, you know, mega suites up there or something. That's total, like, that would be some of the most expensive dollar per square footage real estate I think in the valley. You see stuff like that <clears throat> on the Bountiful bench mm -hmm. by the golf course. Yeah. A lot of uh, duplexes that are $2 million duplexes. Well, there's, a, an, there's an old apartment complex right above Hobel Zoo in Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. You know, been there since 70s and same type of thing you know those are people who capitalized on that being the view and they knew they'd be able to have sellable units at high value so and it probably i don't know what the conversation at that time was but i would hope that that preserved some of that like bst shoreline by permitting that noise yeah. do you want to come back yes please. a little bit further up the canyon is where uh Ted Bundy was. Oh, that's what's interesting. I think they got him at that house. Here in North Arden? No. Uh, I think yeah. I told him to It's now burned down. You can only go to the basement. So, you know, another thing I could do is run the same. I can run the same calculations for like the 30% density to double the, the and just see what the calculations look like. Yeah, but it's going to become dramatically more dense up there because the size of the parcels are bigger, so they're going to be able to cluster them more heavily. It would, it would still be nice to know those numbers, you know. So, yeah. we, so when if someone asks you, well, why did you do thirty percent down here, but you only did twenty five percent, you know, that, that, then you've got you, then you've got the response that comes back to them that says, well, this is why. Here's the numbers. Do you really want those kind of numbers up there? You know. Right. Okay. So I would prefer not to develop north of the cove at all. I know, me too. It's pretty I think, steep. I think there's some issues with water steep. and things possibly, but I think being prepared and at least having discussions and all that is. So John, just a quick question. Isn't he supposed to, somebody's supposed to develop like a regional park up there and he doesn't want to? leave it for it. So we, are you talking to in the, North of the cove. North of the, in cove. North of the cove. His his original plan or showed a regional park up in this area, uh -huh. um, which is pretty much a trail park. Yeah, it's not a. It's, it's better, not flat. Right? Isn't it? Isn't well, the, there's there's a trail that comes down this corridor. So this, yeah. That's where the power line is, but it was basically up here above the basin. Yeah. Um, is where they were proposing a regional, and I think it's still in their proposal, but we haven't seen anything new from them for no. six months I know or whatever. Doesn't want to do that. Well, I don't mean to change the subject, but I'm really concerned about the trails being preserved up there. Mm -hmm. If we're having, because I see yellow above the trail, and so it, does that mean there's going to be homes? Um, that's I our just, that's our annexation declaration. Yeah. So that's an area where the city 
Um, above, right now, essentially above Nebo Ave is Lieber, unincorporated Lieber County, but yeah. we're saying that it's possible for us and or our partners to service municipal level services up to this line, which is just above the power line corridor. That doesn't obligate us, but it, it permits a property owner to request annexation. And we don't, those are legislative decisions. We have broad decision-making authority in that way, but so we don't have to accept it, but um, the city through some process has already determined that that's the north, northernmost line, easternmost line the city is going to manage. Service. Service. So, and so you, you yeah. run the risk of like, if you don't include that, Pleasant View could. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the power, power line. Power so line. this line is the power line and the trail though, right? Yeah, there's a trail. So why there. can't we mark this off as like non-buildable cons conservation area so that we preserve those yeah. trails? I don't because... know. Well, I don't know that it's not buildable. We certainly could call it conservation. I don't yeah. know, John, do you know the history of why our annexation boundary is why so there's a portion, well, it basically goes to the Forest Service line. Yeah. And there's a portion of this that is unbuildable, which is where that regional park was because it's too steep. Yeah. It's like 30% slope. Um, but there are flat areas in here that where they would like to do development. And I think that's the last time I went before the council, one of the things made by the council was maybe take everything off the power lines off and Above move the it power down. Lines. Yeah. 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 So that that was one of the ideas that I I can't remember which council member said, but I remember the mayor said, hey, I don't want anything about yeah. the power lines, which, yeah. but the trade-off would be, we can't just declare it conservation unless we pay for it. Oh, yeah. There's okay. some, there's some lawsuits about that. Right. But if we, if we said, here's 200 acres, you could build 200 units, but why don't you put all 200 of them below here and leave this open, that's allowed. Because mm -hmm. that's part of the development process. Or agreement process I right guess. now what can he get in the county uh isn't it one unit per acre so that's 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 what in theory he could which is 200, 200 acres yeah um there's a, there's an argument again like with the slope is this really developable yeah and so do you count it in the 200 or like it's <laughs> yeah and so that's how you it's going to be this <laughs> and i think that's why they you know, they continually don't bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> but there have been there have been situations where you know cities have, have made mistakes on hillside development. Yeah. And and sometimes sometimes they catch it. Sometimes the developers make the mistakes. There's one up in Providence. I'm pretty sure it wasn't someone you know. They they put their development in and when they cut the road, they took all the dirt they were excavating and just threw it on the downhill lots. And the city went in and red tagged them all because they put 30 feet of hill on the lot and said, Hey, you're gonna have to get those engineered. We won't we won't issue building permits. But anyway, I, I think I think that the engineers involved in this are more sophisticated because they know and that's why this project has been what six years, five years, at least, and probably still another two or three. I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe we'll all be retired before this ever develops. Who knows? So does that answer? Yeah. Well, it's just yeah. having this, take this happens too. Um, it happened at the Princeton City West Point. <laughs> West Point <laughs> and it's below them. Yeah. So yeah. basically yeah. by yeah. being able to provide a level of services, yeah. they grabbed a big yeah. piece of land yeah. that cut off like Clinton mm -hmm. would have gone west further. Um so where 4575 North is, like uh -huh. say, say Randy made good with Pleasant View City or the county, and they ran a road that direction, it, it's not un, it's unfeasible that that went into a different city if they can serve it. And that happens all the time. Like you, city boundaries are funky and it's really it's based oftentimes on yeah. ability to, to provide urban level of services mm -hmm. to a water, sewer, what is this, irrigation. What is this piece of property? What is it called? What, are they, what do you the, call it right below? Ben Loman, it's cut there. It, some people call it like the scarf or the bench. You're talking the bench, yeah. maybe? No, maybe they call it. You're talking this piece right here. Long yeah, long bench. Thank you. Long bench. Yeah. Long yeah. bench. Um, there's a lot of people concerned about long bench and you know, building on it. And, but that's already well, been approved, right? No, no. There is a development agreement for that area. There is. From, is that with from you? like 2000 with Marriott? In North Ogden, uh -huh. 
which um speaking of this little spot here is a school and so that could be blue as well Oh, so thank I know. You. No, that's a new thank school, isn't thank it? You. It's yeah. just school owned. I don't oh, know. Oh, school owned. So, I didn't realize so it's the either. North North U States. Is that right, Brandon? Yes. And it it is currently subdivisions are approved all the way up to here. And dirt is moving. It's along the well, along the western boundary. It's not all the, of that. Okay, wait, this I'm this sorry. development agreement happened in like 2000 when the city that. did the hillside zone like study. Mm -hmm. uh, they came in. Uh, Anyways, there was a lawsuit involved and the development agreement was the resolution of the lawsuit. It's basically HP1 zone, basically for all of this, yeah. which is what okay. the Hillside study said. I remember, I remember Eric talking about that, but I guess I didn't realize that was all the way up on Long Bench. And, and there are things like in the agreement, the, it says Long Bench needs to be open. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's not private ownership. So there's some things like that, but there are houses planned on top, but it it doesn't, there's not specifics on like how close they are or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. But there is a health agreement out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm concerned too. Uh, Tiffany has a, the future max, the future park arcs map, yeah. thank you, that we just saw has um, trails, future trails mm -hmm. in pink on that map. And um, there's trails, yeah. So like, Right now, this is going through that division, that um, agreement, and and this one. How do we have the builder not build right on top of this? Yeah, so we access. We when a subdivision comes in and develops a trail like that, it's typically done as a six foot wide sidewalk oh. on one side of the road. Like kind of, have like you seen the new one at Parker Park? <clears throat> they just yeah. connected from that new neighborhood behind to the new one. Yeah. So they would just add that into their development. So in, in some cases, it walk. can be behind yeah. lots or like through a yeah. Yeah. Sidewalk, sidewalk. 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 Like this automatically goes through the developers, the pink it, lines. Yeah, as, as long as it's part of their, I don't know what the 2000. So yeah. that, that subdivision just got approved. There's a, the trail is coming along Mountain Road. And then right here, there's a depression. And that's where the trail is supposed to go up on that map okay. that I'll zoom back to. <laughs> But yeah, we're Tiffany has been really, really good about attending our technical review committee meetings and getting developers to construct trail connections as That's we good. pick up new subdivisions. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And, and the one in all the meetings that I've ever heard, they're they're constantly talking about the connection in the parks and making sure we making have sure they have that and. But most of so most of them into the subdivision it's just sidewalk right yeah a lot of them is just or like mountain road. roads cross section includes a six foot wide asphalt trail on one side yeah. of the north side which mm -hmm. would be a continuous trail ribbon that crosses the yeah city. kind of like a big coat coal bill yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep like the rail trail up there yeah so that was a lot of information to go through in a short amount of time so if you have other thoughts and considerations send them to me, um, but I will take all this feedback that I've made notes on and and make amendments and bring something else to you. Well, again, our our work for the last year and a half, but I think a lot has to do with you somehow helping us. Given, helping us. Now we have connect the dots. About. Yeah, it's connecting really our dots and official. discussions. Yeah. Um. So with that approved property, though. Well, it's already going in. It would be hard for Pleasant View to annex this undeveloped in. I don't know how far up north it goes. We That's right. I'm wondering, 41. does it go all the way up to 4575? John, the development agreement. I believe it's all the yeah. way to the hillside. All right, sweet. So, so that yeah, would we're good. Yeah. lock it in. I mean, just, I'd like to look at all options, you know. Yeah. I mean, if we're and I will say technically the county does have zones that allow for less than one an acre, mm -hmm. but likelihood of them it's I mean the, it's hard because it's convincing two people yeah to vote. Yeah, I mean it's all of it is but I you know I still just want to know all the options. Like these are all the options that could happen up there from no development to county options to annexing it in. County can't provide services, can they, John? No. no, 
No. So we can charge them for So well, I should I should Again, say. It's just being the more prepared you are. <laughs> sewer. Information and all the county options. can't provide them sewer without using city uh, water. He's already got his own. Well, that's what I was going to say is water and secondary and things are things that they can provide themselves. So I, it would, there's no way it would happen without the city being involved in some way. But I, I would, imp my impression is that one acre lots, uh, they would probably wait for a more favorable council. If our <laughs> council said, you, you, meaning if they can't be in agreement, the county will probably won't be less than one acre, which means the ground will be undeveloped for yeah, stays undeveloped. Yeah, which is, I think, what their attorney said was, "Hey, if, yeah. if we don't agree with the annexation, we won't bring yeah, it up." Yeah, we won't bring it up. He did say that. Yeah. Hey, let's just disagree forever. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where I'm at. But I have to see city council people. So <laughs> I just, yeah. I, but yeah, I think it's best to be pleasant. prepared and just keep talking really? about yeah. all the options. Oh. Yeah. Because pleasant feels thank you. But not that see not but that's what we were talking about. But I don't know how pleasant you could annex it if it's already um approved to be annexed, if it's already annexed into the city to the west of it. He has no there's no connection to Pleasant View. Isn't he adjacent to it? Yeah. No, we approve. So that's what I'm saying. That that big swath yeah. right there. It's, it's hard to break an annexation plan of two cities. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So it's right it's now, now uh, it's now a, an yeah, island so. in North Ogden. So Pleasant View. I I would say there's a 99.9 percent .9 chance that's going to be in North Ogden City. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we're talking circles. Yeah. But which, which but still yeah. But I think like in saying well we don't want to do that and that's the best option. That's great, but I still think we should have zoning yep. that is the best option for that area in place. Absolutely. Just to assume in, in the general plan. Yeah. Uh, we need to have a council of five for a reason. So yeah, in three of them, let's have some zoning that we agree on in place. Before we go, we do have now we have a quorum. Like six of us because yeah, ryan's online so. yeah we do um, we do have some business to take care of the minutes consideration from august 25th okay um, has everyone had a chance to look over those the minutes from the last meeting yes all three of you guys were there mm -hmm. um i mean I, I'm too. I didn't read everywhere. I did a little late, but I'm like, Shaw wasn't real happy. So I'll make a motion to approve the We have a second. Did you get a second? All right. Yes, we did. So, yeah, those minutes approved. Yes. Um. Uh, and I, think and I, need really a, I need a vote on the motion. Yeah, you need a vote. On we need to vote. We need, we need to vote, everyone. Oh, okay. Favor, say aye. 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 Okay, and then we need a motion for adjournment when you're all ready. Okay, do we have any comments? Ryan, does Ryan have any comments? Nope, I'm doing good. Thank you. All right, then do we have a um, motion that we adjourn? Second. <laughs> right. <laughs>